Hello, 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 my best bookies. Today I am going to be making a video about all the books I read in March. I read 10 total books in March, which is absolutely amazing. I am so proud of that. I have not read that many books in a month in like forever, and I'm super glad I did this month, but I'm going to start telling you about them. So first off, we have Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Roche. This was a very, very, very good story. We follow our main character, Myra, and the other seven wintering refugees. It takes place in this world where all four of the seasons are kingdoms, and winter has been taken over by spring, but the refugees are trying to take winter back and its kingdom. So they travel to the other kingdoms, called the Rhythms, and a bunch of stuff happens. It was pretty good. I felt it was kind of a bit all over the place with the plot, and... I didn't love the writing and I just had a few issues with it. I also thought it was a bit dragged out, but I was really hooked in the whole time. So in the end, I gave it 3.75 stars. And before I read Snow Like Ashes, because I'm just going crazy today apparently, I read Diaz for Deadbeat by Sue Grafton, the fourth book in the Kinsey Milhone series. This was a great mystery, a great, great mystery, but like I always say, I feel like Sue Grafton's writing style is a bit over descriptive. I feel like the plot can drag at some points, but I love the main characters so, so much, and the plots are always great. This one follows our private investigator, Kinsey Milhone, when Alvin Lamardo walks into her office and asks her to deliver a $25,000 check to a 15-year-old boy. She does a bit more research, and she realizes that he is actually John Daggett, a convicted criminal. And stuff happens from there, because one day, Daggett ends up dying drowned in a river. And that's what this is about. She's trying to find this killer and stuff, that kind of thing. It was a great mystery. Again, the plot twist was so crazy. I love Sue Grafton's mysteries. They're so, so well done, and I really recommend them. I gave this four stars. So I read Dia's for Deadbeat, then I read Snow Like Ashes, and after that, I read A Wrinkle in Time by Madeleine La Engel, the first book in the classic time quintet. I did only read this for the movie, but I actually loved it. It has become my favorite children's classic of all time. It was such a fun, quirky, cute story. We follow our main character, Meg, her brother, Charles Wallace, and their friend, Calvin O'Keefe, as they essentially have a bunch of adventures trying to find Meg's father throughout the space-time continuum and that kind of thing, along with the assistance of three hilarious ladies. So this was so, so good, as I said. The movie was pretty good, too. It was one of the better movie adaptations I've seen. I ended up giving this a five star. I loved it so much. After that, I read The One and Only Ivan by Catherine Applegate. So this won the Newberry Award medal, and I don't know why. It wasn't bad. It was good. But it wasn't that great. We follow our main character, Ivan, who is a gorilla who was taken from the jungle at a very young age and now lives in a mall. <laughs> That's it. Um, and he's lived in this mall for most of his life until one day a baby elephant comes along named Ruby and he knows that she needs to have a good life, a better life than he did. She needs to get out of this mall and he is the one that will have to take her away from there. So like the first two thirds of this novel were plotless. It was just like, Ivan does this, Ivan does that, Ivan does this with his friends, Bob does this, you know, the characters. And it was very characterized and it was very character driven and I appreciated that but I found that very, very boring. Um, but it was still a cute, cute story. It was um, definitely one I would recommend. I listened to the audiobook but I think that was a miss for me because I do believe the real book has drawings and that's something I probably should have looked into. But um, I gave that a 3.5 stars. After that, I read Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, the first book in the Illuminae Files trilogy, and I loved this. We follow our two main characters, Katie Grant and Ezra Manson. On the day their planet is invaded, they broke up. Um, however, they find that they are fleeing the planet with each other, trying to get on to the spaceships that will take them away from there. However, they ended up getting separated amongst the three ships that are taken from their planet. However, of the four, I believe, ships that attacked their planet, one did survive and is trying to capture them um, and kill them before they can tell the rest of the galaxy, essentially, that this ship tried to bomb their world, is what it really follows. And however, there is a dangerous plague going around amongst the ships, and it was just so, so good. I explained it very badly, but it is a complex, twisted plot told in a mixed media format, so like emails and messages and images and text and a bunch of fun cool stuff like that. I really really loved it. It was a great great story and I can't wait to get to the sequel Gemina. I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. It was so so good. And after that I read It Gets Worse by Shane Dawson. Um, this is just another collection of essays about his life. It was a quick awesome one day read. 
I love his stories. They're so funny, so tragic, so well done, and so honest, and I really, really appreciate that. Um, not much to say about this one. It was a good one. I gave it 3.75 stars. Definitely would recommend it if you're looking for a comical read. This is kind of a laugh out loud thing, which is nice. After that, I read The Amazing History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. This story follows our main character, Griffin, and his ex-boyfriend, Theo, just passed away in a drowning accident. He let Theo go so that he could go to college, and he broke up with Theo so that Theo could have fun at college without having to worry about him back home, but he always thought they were endgame, until, obviously, he dies. When Theo was at college, he did end up meeting another guy, and they fell in love, and his name was Jackson. So the only person who can understand what Griffin's really going through is Jackson, and they have to turn to each other and grieve and bond with each other, and this is told alternating between past and present formats, and I loved that so much. This whole novel was so romantic, and there were so many things you never expected. There were like, what the crap just happened? And this was like a housewives drama, like crazy, but it was also so emotional, so personal. I've never grieved during a book like I really did with this one, and it was just so, so well done. I gave this five amazingly big, giant, blow up the world stars. After that, I read Ink, Iron, and Gloss by Gwendolyn Clare. Um, this is supposed to be the first book in a new steampunk duology, and it takes place in this very, very, very cool world. We follow our main character, who is a scriptologist along with her mother, and they live in this script scripted world, completely made up, called Veldana. However, when attackers come in from Earth and take her mother, um, Elsa has to go to the real world. I'm sorry, I have like a tear in my book, and I'm trying to make it look okay. But, um... Elsa has to go to the real world to try and save her, and there she ends up getting into this house of other people that have scriptol scriptological powers, along with alchemy powers and mechanics powers, and she meets this boy named Leo, and they have some kind of romantic relationship kind of thing. Very... I had a lot of problems with this book, essentially. This was my least favorite book of the month. I didn't really, really enjoy it at all. Um, I, I thought the main characters were all so cliche. I thought the writing style was just impossible to get into. And I really just couldn't get into this book at all for some reason until the very end. But the very end was good. If you like steampunk, this is probably one for you. I think I had the potential to enjoy it. I just didn't overall was what it was. So I would not really recommend this. I gave this like 2.5 stars. And after that, I read Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. Of course, I mainly read this because of the movie, but before I read this, I saw the movie twice because I loved it so, so much. And I loved this book even more. It's become my favorite contemporary of all time. I loved it so, so, so much. It was so well done. So we follow our not-so-openly gay main character named Simon, who is a junior in high school. And he has been having these anonymous chats with a boy online named Blue. Now, he doesn't know who Blue is, but he knows Blue goes to his high school. However, when he doesn't log out of a computer in the media center one day, somebody finds his emails and uses them to blackmail him. And that's what the story is about. It is such a tragic topic, and it is so sad about outing people and stuff. Like, I don't understand how monstrous of a person you could be if you could do that. But Becky Albertalli wrote this so lightly. Like, she made it such a light topic, and I loved that. I loved how it was written. I loved our main character, Simon, so much. He was so, so amazing. And overall, I found this to be just a great, great story, and I definitely recommend the movie and the book. Yeah, it's all so, so good. And then after that, my final book of the month, I read Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi, which I adored. This was a great, great fantasy. It is West African-inspired, which was really, really cool to read about, and we follow three different perspectives. Our main character, kind of, Zaley. Um, then you have Amadi and Anand. So... Zaley is this magical person. She is called a diviner, and she can remember when magic was all throughout the land, and when it ran through her blood, when it ran through the grass and the wind, and when her mother was alive and could control magic. However, she also remembers the day the magic disappeared and her mother was slaughtered, along with all the other magis in the country, essentially. However, the people that would have become magi is called diviners once they turn 13. They let the diviners live, and that's what Zaley is. And she, and I can't really explain the plot of the story without giving too much away, but she is trying to get magic back. Our other character, Amari, is the princess of the nation, and she doesn't agree with her father slaughtering the magi and the diviners, and she tries to escape with Zaley to get magic back. And then you have Inan, the prince, Amari's brother. 
and he wants to eradicate magic as well, and he's trying to hunt Zaylee down and stop her from getting magic back. It was such a twisted, dark, gory, awesome, oh my god, blow your mind tale, and I loved it so much. It was so well done. I gave it 4.25 stars. I really, really enjoyed it. But anyway, those are all the books I read in March. Um, I read 10, like I said, and I enjoyed most of them. It was a great reading month overall. I read Simon vs. Thelma, Sapiens Agenda, and History is All You Left Me, which have become some of my favorite contemporaries of all time. I read Illuminae, which is a new favorite sci-fi. It was just a great month overall, and I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find me on Twitter at Alex Reed Reviews, Instagram at Alex's Reads and Reviews 1, and Goodreads, and of course YouTube at Alex's Reads and Reviews. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, as well as clicking the little bell icon to get notifications when I post new videos. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you soon with another video.